fine so what is this ombudsman scheme so the ombudsman scheme uh, is a scheme which has been launched by rbi okay so the main purpose of this scheme is for consumer protection right it's for consumer protection that is uh, we see most of the times the consumers have some grievances right uh, with respect to the services which are provided by the uh, you know banks right the consumers might face issues such as you know the bank is not providing you know certain uh, uh, services properly so during these times where can the customers go so the customers can go to the banking ombudsman uh, this is a scheme which was uh, introduced in 1949 right it was introduced in 1949 through uh, the amendment by the introduction of a section called section 35a into the act that is the banking regulation act and from 1995 onwards we have the you know uh, uh, we have this ombudsman scheme right uh, this is the uh, you know amended version from 1995 right it is an amended version and the present scheme which we have is a updated version from 2006 right so the 2006 version is an updated version so this particular scheme is applicable to all the banks right so basically as long as the bank is scheduled bank right as long as the bank is scheduled bank it is applicable right so the banking ombudsman scheme is applicable to all those banks which are scheduled now what is this banking ombudsman actually so it's a quasi judicial authority right it is a quasi judicial authority you know the judicial authority the judicial authority is the one where you know you have a grievance uh, you file a case you file a complaint you go there and uh, you, you actually there will be a judge right uh, someone from the judicial service on the other hand here in the banking ombudsman it is going to be a quasi judicial authority in the sense you are going to have a particular person who is going to be the judge at the same time you also have the people who are going to what the judicial authority quasi judicial authority there is going to be a particular judge plus some experts as well right he's going to be an expert in the field of finance and banking so he will deal with the customer complaint and look at this the judge who is going to decide your case is going to be a senior official and this person is appointed by the reserve bank of india okay so over the years your reserve bank of india has made the scheme tighter in the sense it is being made stronger so that all the grievances of the customers or what or redressed see generally what happens when you have a problem when you have a problem with the service let's say you deposited some money and uh, that money is lost somehow right first thing you do is you approach the bank okay first thing is you approach the bank if the bank is not responding properly to you where do you go next you go to the banking ombudsman next you go to the banking ombudsman so in fact uh, a latest scheme a new scheme has been introduced further what is that latest scheme the latest scheme is the 2018 scheme called the internal ombudsman scheme okay so what is this internal ombudsman scheme look at this uh, all those commercial banks right which have 10 or more banking outlets they should have an independent internal ombudsman right within their bank itself they should have a internal ombudsman so this ombudsman internal ombudsman is going to look into the customer complaints uh, and uh, you know then if the person is not happy with what this internal ombudsman says then it is going to the ombudsman right the main ombudsman okay so the main ombudsman so basically when you have commercial banks which have 10 or more banking outlets 
in that case how will the uh, process be the grievance redressal process the first thing will be the bank itself if you are not happy with the bank you go to banking outlets or you know bank branches okay so first you go to the bank not happy you go to the internal ombudsman not happy you go to the ombudsman okay so uh now what is this internal ombudsman so this also is an officer this is also an officer who has been uh, who has been actually appointed by whom the bank itself but but he has a mandate of 3 to 5 years you cannot remove this person right you cannot renew the tenure in the sense you cannot reappoint this person he has a fixed term either 3 years or 5 years the bank can decide once decided you cannot remove him so easily why because if you want to remove this person you have to take the approval of rbi so you appoint someone as an officer as someone as an officer of internal ombudsman and if you want to remove this person you have to take the approval of the rbi remuneration is decided by the customer subcommittee of your board of directors not by anyone else right and implementation uh, monitoring uh, by the bank's internal audit mechanism right in the sense how is it being implemented is not something which is overlooked by someone else from outside the bank's internal audit mechanism will only overlook as to whether this internal ombudsman scheme is properly uh, monitor properly implemented or not okay so basically you have two schemes internal ombudsman scheme when you have 10 or more banking outlets for a bank and ombudsman scheme on the top of it okay whenever the customers have the complaint first they go to whom first they go to the bank if they are not happy they go to the internal ombudsman if they are not happy they go to the ombudsman clear next <clears throat> there is something called as micro credit model what is this micro credit model as the name suggests micro credit means small amount of loan right small amount of credit so <clears throat> the idea is that when you are giving small loans very small loans right uh, to borrowers who are impoverished right people who are poorer uh, it will most probably enable them to get self employment they start a small business maybe uh, something like a push cart maybe okay so uh, they might you know buy certain goods and start selling on the streets uh, like hawkers okay people who buy something from someone and sell it on the streets they are called hawkers so uh, you know they might find it as a self employment uh, so this is often given to uh, those people micro credit is given to those people who do not have anything to give as a collateral right they cannot pledge anything they cannot pledge anything in the bank so they can just approach the institutions and get the loans very small loans maybe 10000 15000 isa loans and they do not have any credit history and they do not have a steady source of income so if you are providing micro credit to people right it is going to enable them to get a self employment right so they are usually outside the formal sector there is no way they can come to the formal sector they can make way into the larger economy if their business grows right so make the very small self sufficient and it would lead to poverty alleviation all this is true all this is true if everything works fine that is you gave a small loan to the people right you gave a small loan to a poor person he uses the money properly he starts a business right he runs the business uh, rather religiously after some time you know uh, his business improves now so far he used to be in the informal sector because his business is growing he is going to come into the formal sector a sab sahi hai but the problem is 
So far, we have found no evidence that such a transformative effect will happen, right? So there is no widespread uh, evidence that such a transformative effect happens. So we have to study more carefully, right? We have to study more carefully whether microcredit model actually works or not, right? Pela microcredit dena hai, check bhi karna hai, right? We have to give microcredit and see whether it works at all, right? You have to follow it up, right? This is the first thing. Second thing, there is no guarantee of repayment. That's for sure. You're giving microcredit and these are poor people and you can't expect them to, you know, uh, run a successful business, right? Uh, the problem is uh, because there is no guarantee of repayment, what is happening now is whenever someone gives a microcredit to poor people, they make sure that they have a strict short term schedule, right? Uh, let's say every week you have to pay this much amount of money, right? So you gave some money, right? Let's say you gave 10K to someone, right? You asked him to start a business. You asked him to start a business. Uh, this is a poor person. He started some business. Within a week, you go and ask for 5,000 rupees return, right? Why? You have that insecurity that this person may not return the money. Okay, so now this is a strict short term schedule. So the po poor person cannot invest in long term business. That is why what we are supposed to do is whenever we are giving advancing microcredit, always make sure that the grace periods are introduced in the sense if you give 10,000 loan, do not ask for any sort of uh, repayment till at least let's say three months. After three months, ask for the installments. Okay. And generally, go for monthly payments. Do not go for weekly payments. Right. It becomes burdensome on the poor person who has taken the microcredit. Okay. So, because of all this, when you go for short term uh, or, you know, weekly uh, repayment schedules, the incomes will look meager for that person. Right. Uh, and that is why you are supposed to do what you are supposed to provide him uh, a better repayment schedule. That is a monthly schedule would be better. OK. And finally, we have DCIPs. DCIPs. So what are DCIPs? Uh, domestically, systemically important banks. Right. Domestic, systemically important banks. Right. What are these banks? Uh, the idea uh, got germinated or uh, it got generated uh, in G20 summit, right? In the G20s. G20 is a group of 20, right? Group of 20 leading economies in the world. So these leading, these leading economies in the world, what they have done is they have come up with a particular body called financial stability board okay financial stability board what does this financial stability board do what it does is it brings in the governments from various nations okay governments from various nations and they discuss about the financial stability of the world they discuss about the financial stability of the world that is they discuss as to how to make our financial system that is your banking system insurance sector stock market sector all these sectors how to make them more secure more resilient right so more foolproof so that they do not fail right so this is something which is discussed in the financial stability board as the name suggests to bring financial stability so what this board does is it has asked the countries to identify systemically important financial institutions. Okay. They're supposed to, every country is supposed to identify systemically. So it is written systematically. It is systemically. Okay. Systemically important financial institutions. When we say systemically important, the meaning is in an economy, in an economy, a systemically important institution is the one if 
this institution fails, it is going to have a ripple effect in your economy. Right? The effect of the failure of this institution will not be limited to that institution itself. It is going to spread to a, you know, a larger area in the financial sector. Right? Such institutions which are very, very important for your economy to grow, very, very important for your economy to be stable or called the systemically important financial institutions, right? So your FSB, that is Financial Stability Board, asked every country to identify such institutions and also asked the countries to put in place a framework to reduce the risk to them, right? So you have to put up framework in the sense come up with certain rules when we say framework you know set of rules right it's come up with set of rules so that these particular identified banks or financial institutions do not face any risk if they have risk you should put in place certain framework so that the risk reduces okay now accordingly accordingly rbi every year identifies such particular uh, such financial institutions and it also identifies certain banks right so banks are also financial institutions so rbi calls them tbtf rbi calls them tbtf too big to fail institutions right too big to fail institutions or too big to fail banks the meaning is if they fail if they ever fail it will severely hurt our economy right these are too big to fail institutions. If they fail, it will hurt our economy very badly. Why? Because they have very big size, right? The banks are too big. Secondly, they have cross-jurisdictional activities in the sense they do not operate only in India. They operate abroad as well. They have complexity in them, right? They do not do only banking activities they engage in other activities as well right uh, you know they might be uh, partnering with firms to sell insurance right they are dealing with uh, you know dmat accounts that is uh, they might be acting as brokers for selling the uh, stock market uh, products right and lack of substitute and interconnection right in the sense you do not have if this particular bank fails let's say in india if SBI fails, right, is there a bank which can replace SBI? It's too huge a bank to replace. HDFC, if it fails all of a sudden, do you have any other big bank which can replace HDFC? No. Basically, we have bigger banks and if these bigger banks fail, it becomes really difficult. Okay. So, these are also banks whose assets, right, whose asset sizes you know exceed two percent of your gdp right so this is the condition the condition is uh they are too big right in the sense their size asset size exceeds two percent of the gdp right asset size exceeds two percent of the gdp now whenever there is a case of distrust in these banks because these are too big to fail if they fail it is going to hurt the economy whenever the government senses a case of distress in these banks the government comes to support these banks right so this is the reason why rbi always says deco i have identified you guys as you know systemically important banks make sure that you maintain additional equity capital in the sense these are related to bessel norms right these are related to bessel norms Bessel norms. We are going to learn about it later. Okay. So do not worry about it. We'll learn about it later. Now, so you have to maintain certain extra reserves, basically. You have to maintain certain extra reserves so, in order for you to stay safe. And the next part is presently, you have three banks which are called domestic systemically important banks ICICI, SBI, and HDFC. These are the three DZIPs we have in India. Okay. So that ends your banking chapter.
that ends your banking chapter and uh, the next chapter the next chapter is your NPAs. so familiar faces is it not so you know all these faces hopefully so who is this person you know this person is it not huh who is this person let's see yeah only the indian banks are considered here yes domestic systemically important banks Remember, it is systemically, it is not systematically, okay? Systemic means which is very, very important, which is, you know, in the core, okay? Okay, this person is Malia, fine. Who's this person? Let's see. Who's this person? The second person, Choksi, very good. And this person will be known, obviously. When you know Choksi, you will be knowing the third person as well, right? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, it's Nirav Modi. Uh, it's not just Modi, Mo it's Nirav Modi. Fine. Uh, see, non performing assets. What are these non performing assets? Uh, wherever there are non performing assets, as you can see, it is a burden on the bank, true. At the same time, it is burden on the person as well, that is, the depositors as well. It is going to hurt the bank as well as the customers. Okay. So now, so this person who is taking the money are these people. These are the people who are taking the money. So this is the person who has taken the money from the bank and put it on the, you know, it has converted into NPA and the burden is borne by this person and the bank. Okay. Let's see what this is all about. Even before we go into uh, your, what uh, NPAs, definition of NPAs and how to deal with it. First, we'll look at what are the different types of loans we find. So one type of loan we find is fixed interest loan, right? A fixed interest loan is the one from the starting, right? If you take a loan today and uh, if you are supposed to repay it in 10 years, right? Repay it in 10 years. Uh, the tenure is 10 years. You say the tenure is 10 years means uh, if you have taken 10 lakh rupees, 10 lakh rupees, you can keep on paying for the next 10 years. Okay. The tenure is 10 years. And for the, all the 10 years, all the 10 years, the interest rate is, let's say, 10%. The interest rate is 10%. You do not change the interest rate. Okay. Such an interest rate, which is charged at a particular rate for the whole tenure, is called a fixed interest rate okay such loan is called the fixed interest rate loan on the other hand you have the floating interest rate loan this is something which changes right this is a interest rate that changes so you have taken the loan for 10 year period right first year there will be a particular interest rate second year there will be a different interest rate altogether right so such interest rates which change across the tenure across the tenure of the loan we call them floating interest rates so your teaser loan is a type of what it's a type of floating interest rate loan as the name suggests it is a teaser loan uh, what is a teaser loan it teases you right how does it tease you uh, what it does is in the starting you know uh, the bank says that the bank or the lender tells you that See, I am giving you a loan at just 2%. The moment you see that the loan is being given for 2% per annum, you feel like it's very good, right? Let me take the loan. Just at 2%, you take the loan, right? But you have to remember, it's a teaser, right? Second year, the interest rate will be increased to 3%. Third year, 5%. Fourth year, 8%. Fifth year, maybe 12%, right? Basically, the interest rate keeps on increasing over a period of time, right? So, a teaser loan is the one which charges very low interest rate in the starting in order to attract the customer 
after the customer is attracted the you know interest rate is increased further going forward so in the floating interest rate loan teaser loans are one type apart from that the normal floating interest rate loan how does it work what they do is they give you a floating interest loan and they inform you that your uh, loan is a floating interest loan and every year they are going to inform whenever they are going to make the changes in the interest rate right so on what basis do they change the interest rate it will be usually linked to inflation right it will be linked to inflation if the inflation increases they are also going to increase the floating interest rate okay that is your uh, fixed interest rate loan and floating interest rate loan next when it comes to the borrower types when we look at the borrower types we have uh, two types of borrowers right uh, one is the prime borrowers the better borrowers okay one is the prime borrowers right and the other one is subprime borrowers when we talk about individuals taking the loan we have two types so prime borrowers and subprime borrowers the prime borrowers are the ones who who have capacity to pay they have the capacity to pay they have the capacity to pay back the loan on the other hand you have the subprime borrowers they do not have the capacity to repay the loan and uh, you know teaser loans were given to such borrowers right teaser loans were given to such borrowers during their uh, gfc global financial crisis we have talked about it right the other name for gfc was subprime crisis itself is it not subprime crisis so what they did they attracted the customers by giving teaser loans right and these borrowers were subprime borrowers right who did not have the capacity to repay the loan okay so when they are individuals we call them subprime and prime when they are firms we call them over leveraged borrowers right so a over leveraged borrower or a over leveraged firm is the firm which has borrowed beyond its capacity to pay right so it does not have the capacity to repay the loan it has taken right then we call it is over leveraged right then we call it is over leveraged so what does it have it has a high ratio of debt to equity so you know what is debt debt is the borrowing part it has borrowed more than it has borrowed more than its equity its equity its share value hai na total share value kitna hai usse zyada borrow kar diya hai hai na so total you know asset value jo hai total share value jo hai right it has borrowed more than that then we call it is a over leveraged firm okay next yeah we have something called as zombie lending zombie lending so what is this zombie lending <clears throat> so it's fine when you uh, sir will the bank allow to uh, pay over the same uh, over their share value uh you mean to say will the bank give the loans over their share value it depends completely on a particular thing like how well you are uh, dealing with the uh, bank itself say for example you have been a honest customer of the bank for over 10 years now okay you know the managers and you have the transaction history you have the credit history you have been paying the you know loans upright every time you have taken a loan you are paying back the loan now the bank trusts you now you go one day suddenly to the bank and you say see i am going to expand my business i need a much much bigger loan do you think the bank is going to you know take a step back no it is not going to the bank is going to say good you have a great credit history why should i not give the loan to you maybe it is over leveraged i am going to give it to you right instead of giving to a person who has just walked in to take a loan i would give the loan to a person whom i can trust 
विथ होम आई हैव बिल्ड ट्रस्ट ओवर द इयर्स राइट ऐसा सोच के बैंक लोन दे देते हैं राइट सो यूजली यू आर नॉट सपोज टू बट द बैंक डू गिव दम राइट द बैंक डू गिव सच लोन नाउ वट इज दिस जोम्बी लैंडिंग इट्स अंडरस्टैंडेबल इफ यू हैव अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग बैंक राइट इट्स अंडरस्टैंडेबल वेन यू हैव अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग बैंक हुज बुक्स आर गुड राइट हुज बैलेंस शीट्स आर गुड इन द सेंस they are giving loans they are recovering also uh, the loans properly such banks if they are giving uh, you know loans which are uh, uh, to the subprime customers or over leveraged customers it is understandable but sometimes what happens is the weak banks right the weak banks start giving loans to subprime and over leveraged customers such a lending such a lending by the weak banks to subprime and over leverage customers we call it zombie lending why do we call zombie lending uh it's called a zombie lending because the banks weak banks are going to become zombies very soon right they are going to become dead zombies uh you know they are going to become dead banks very soon in the sense they will die right they are dying but they will be alive right they are going to die but they are going to be alive as well right and the second problem is that of evergreening what is this evergreening mean evergreening means you take a new loan in order to pay off a old loan okay taking a new loan to pay off a old loan that is called as evergreening and third thing is write off right there is something called as a write off and there is something called as a waive off right see here write off and a waive off there is a difference so what is the difference you have the asset side and the liability side right you have the asset side and the liability side in your bank balance sheet okay you have the asset side and the liability side on the asset side you have the loans loans are on the asset side why is it a assets on the asset side when you give a loan when you give a loan as a bank you earn interest from it right as long as you earn something from a particular asset or particular thing we call it an asset right you invest money somewhere if it is earning something for you we call it an asset okay when the bank gives the loan to someone right it earns interest for the bank that is why loan is an asset okay so it's on the asset side so if it is on the asset side right you may have to pay the corporate tax right on the profits you make you may have to pay the corporate tax so the loan which has not been serviced right what is servicing a loan remember when we say servicing a loan when we say servicing a loan it means paying interest okay paying interest so servicing a loan is nothing but paying interest so if a loan is not being recovered if the loan a person who has taken the loan is not paying the interest is not paying the principal such loans are supposed to be removed from the asset side so that you can reduce the corporate tax hai na so that you can reduce the corporate tax such an exercise is called a write off such an exercise is called write off you remove the loan which is not being serviced from the asset side right so that you can pay less corporate tax and whereas a waive off is like you are going to remove this itself from your complete books you say that there is no such loan at all in our books right the difference is that at some place when you write off whenever you write off it still remains in the books books mein rehta hai it remains in the books which means the customer is still liable he is still liable he has to pay the customer is still liable he has to pay at some point when there is a waive off when there is a waive off the customer liability ends 
the customer liability ends. Right? Customer liability ends here. And, uh, you know, from the books, it's struck off. From the books, bank books, it's struck off. Now, uh, you can take recent examples whereby, whereby uh, you see the farm loans being waived off. Is it not? The farm loans are usually waived off. Uh, you know, state governments usually waive off the farm loans. It means they are actually removing these particular loans from the books itself. Uh, the farmers need not pay the loan anymore. Whereas a write-off is different. Write-off is not a wave off. Write-off, you see that, you know, the government has asked certain banks to write off the loans. When they write off the loans, when the banks write off, from the balance sheet, it is not visible. From this year's balance sheet, it is not visible. Why? Because it is previous year's loan. These people have not paid, right? So, this year balance sheet se that is a right off. Okay. Liability does not end. Fine. Next. What is an NPA then? An NPA is an asset or a loan whose principal or the interest or both is overdue for 90 days. Right? For over 90 days. If the person who has taken the loan has not turned towards the bank, either to pay the principal or the interest, right? So, aaj last date tha, to pay the EMI of the loan, but he has not come towards the bank starting today for three months. Okay. So, for three months, he has not come towards the bank itself. Now, such an asset, such a loan is going to be classified as NPA non-performing asset okay in the agriculture loans it is going to be on the basis of cropping season right if you're not paying the loan right if you're not paying the loan for two consecutive uh, cropping seasons right so we have uh you know the cropping seasons three cropping seasons right uh, uh you have kari frabi and zaib right so you're going to learn about it later uh, so, agriculture loans, it is going to be based on cropping seasons, right? And next, you have something called as provisioning. RBI norms, uh, RBI norms say that uh, every bank is supposed to set aside certain amount of money, right? Certain amount of money or funds to cover the losses against their NPA, to cover the losses against their NPA, in the sense the bank should be knowing uska NPA is kitna hai, right? Accordingly, uh, accordingly, with respect to the NPAs, they are supposed to keep aside commensurate amount of funds in order to manage the losses, if any, from NPAs. In the sense, if the NPAs are 10 crore rupees, if the NPAs are 10 crore rupees, you know, commensurate to that, Keep some money aside. Keep some money aside to manage this risk. Okay. This is what any loss you are going to face because of the NPAs, you must be able to manage it. So, extra funds jo side mein rakha hai, but this we call it as provisioning. Right. The problem is when you have more NPAs, when you have more NPAs, you should have more provisioning as well. If you are doing more provisioning, which means you are keeping aside more funds, when you keep aside more funds, you will have less money to lend, right? When you have less money to lend, you will be making less profits, is it not? So higher provisioning, higher NPAs means higher provisioning, higher provisioning means you have less money to lend. If you are lending less, you will be making less profit as a bank. Right? So, more NPS is bad anyways. It's bad anyways. So, we have two types of NPS. One is gross NPA. Right? Gross NPA is, you know, whatever, uh, you know, the amount of money which is supposed to come to you, which is not coming, the people are not paying the loan. Right? 
now gross npa minus provisioning provisioning you understand right certain amount of money that is left to uh, left uh, kept aside to cover the losses against npa that is your provisioning gross npa minus provisioning is your net npa that is your net npa okay that's your net npa now look at this look at the sheer size of it okay npas npas have been rising right it reached 12 lakh crore in the banking sector in 2019 end of 2019 it had reached 12 lakh crore right that's like almost uh 40 percent of your budget okay one year's budget is somewhere around 27 lakh or uh 30 lakh crore right 12 lakh crore were the non-performing assets in the banks right and it amounted to 10.11 percent of the total advances what does this mean if the bank has given 100 crore rupees loan if the banks put together they have given 100 crore rupees as loan 10 crore rupees is not returning right 10 crore rupees is not returning people have not returned to pay repay those loans right so that's a lot of money so we are talking about what the np is 10 percent that's very very high usually kitna rehna chahiye usually it is in the uh, range of three percent to four percent for an economy it is in the range of three percent to four percent right that is manageable but 10 percent is too high look at this the psbs your psbs public sector banks alone had 9.5 lakh crore rupees okay 9.5 lakh crore rupees Unigata, the public sector banks right now classification classification uh yes we call those uh, loans which are not making repayment after 90 days right we call them npas but a further classification is done when it comes to the NPS. Standard assets are the, are the ones which are making orderly payment. No problem about it. Substandard assets. Substandard assets. These are the uh, loans which remain NPA for 12 months or more. Uh, do you still have the background noise? Or can you hear properly? Can you hear properly? Yes. Okay. So the substandard assets are the ones which are going to remain in PA for 12 months or more. Okay. So uh, when you have NPA, NPA is 90 days, right? More than 90 days. It is going to become after 90 days. It is going to be called a substandard asset right if it remains an npa for 12 months right and then it is called a doubtful asset if it remains in the substandard category for a period of 12 months or more and it is called a loss asset when 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 you have the bank auditor going or rbi comes there to that particular asset let's say you know a company has taken a loan let's say a firm has taken the loan the firm has not paid the interest or the principal for a long time now substandard bana doubtful bana now the bank sends an auditor to the firm right the auditor comes to the firm looks at everything okay chalo, tika, you know uh, the thing is there is no way this firm is able to pay the loan right there is no way this firm can pay the loan uh, when i go through the books i feel that you know this uh, particular firm is not able to pay any sort of loan uncollectible I, I can't collect anything from this particular firm even if i sell the assets even if i am selling the assets right i will not be able to get the salvage value recovery value aa nahi sakta hai. i will not be able to get the recovery value right such a you know asset such a loan where there is no salvage value where there is no salvage value and it is declared so by either the bank itself bank auditor or the rbi then we call it 
लॉस सेट मतलब छोड़ देना चाहिए यू कैंट डू एनीथिंग यू कैंट डू एनीथिंग विद सच लोन्स यू हैव टू लीव इट असाइड राइट इफ देयर इज नो सेल्वेज वैल्यू देयर इज नो पॉइंट इन परस्यूइंग फर्दर ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड योर लॉस असेट्स नेक्स्ट स्पेशल मेंशन अकाउंट्स व्हाट आर दी स्पेशल मेंशन अकाउंट्स दिस इज मोर लाइक यू नो अ वार्निंग गिवन बाय आरबीआई टू द लेंडर्स राइट इट इज मोर like a warning given to the uh, lenders by the rbi so what does this mean yeah what does this mean the rbi what it does rbi thinks that why wait for 90 days okay why should i wait for 90 days what i'm going to do is i have access to almost every account in the country right i have access to almost every country, every account in the country i also have what is called as cbs core banking solution right it has the core banking solution so what is this core banking solution so every bank let's say bank 1 bank 2 bank 3 every bank has a core banking solution every bank has a core banking solution cbs1 cbs2 cbs3 right so what is this core banking solution it is you know a uh, a particular platform or a network platform right where every information that bank does transactions all transactions the bank has done will be there in the cbs right all happens through the cbs itself okay every transaction the bank taking the money from someone and lending it to someone everything now all these cbs all these are connected to one more cbs that is the larger cbs that belongs to the rbi because at the end of the day the banks are customers to the rbi na the banks are customers to the rbi so rbi also has a cbs so rbi gets to know whom the banks are lending to and whom the banks are getting the money from clearly it gets to know now what the rbi does is rbi is going to start tracking all those loans which are worth more than 5 crore rupees right all those loans which are worth more than 5 crore rupees in the sense there is a firm right there is a firm called kingfisher firm okay the kingfisher takes the loan right 1 crore rupees from b3 2 crore from b2 1 crore from here 2 crore from here and 3 crore from here all put together it's 6 crore the moment it breaches 5 crore limit rbi starts to track the rbi starts to track the kingfisher loans all the loans will be tracked okay these banks will be thinking still that you know uh, a crore ka loan hai right not an issue this bank will be thinking only 2 crore rupees loan but the rbi knows rbi keeps track of such loans which are beyond 5 crore okay now what it does what it does <clears throat> the moment the moment kf in our case in our case if kf is not paying the interest or the principal in any of these banks in any one of these banks b3 or b2 mein pay kar diya interest b1 mein nahi pay kiya right kf did not pay the interest to b1 or b2 or b3 if it fails to pay interest in any of these right for 30 days for 30 days it is going to be categorized as sma0 that particular firm right that particular loan is going to be categorized as special mention account and the notification will be sent to b1 b2 and b3 
तीनों को नोटिफिकेशन जाएगा सेइंग दैट देखो दिस पर्सन हैज नॉट पेड द लोन राइट ही हैज टेकन द लोन फ्रॉम अदर बैंक एज वेल ही हैज नॉट पेड द लोन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर बैंक बी केयरफुल ट्राई टू रिकवर एज अर्ली एज पॉसिबल राइट ट्राई टू टेक the amount from this person as early as possible similarly a second notification is sent out if the person defaults on payment right and that would be if you are not paying for 31 to 60 days smb2 categorization this is also uh, sent to the banks itself all the relevant banks right if you are not paying it for 61 to 90 days after 90 days anyways it is classified as what it is classified as npa right so before 90 days such classification is there okay next <clears throat> what will be done what will be done uh, by doing this uh, by categorizing something as special mention accounts after uh, mentioning them as special mention accounts right there will be a joint lenders forum created right there will be a joint lenders forum created and uh, you know a corrective action plan can be taken what is this joint lenders forum a joint lenders forum is nothing but uh, you have three banks here right you have three banks who have lent all the three bank representatives come together and they make a forum right they make a forum or a group right that is called the joint lenders forum they are going to come up with a plan they are going to come up with a plan how to recover from this person right tino se loan liya hai right so we have to come up with a coordinated strategy to recollect the uh, to recover the loan from this person that is called your jlf right and uh, they come up with a corrective action plan so the jlf works on majority voting okay uh why does it uh, how does it work it works on majority voting in the sense b1 b2 b3 in tino me we saw that B3 had given the B1 had given the highest loan, three crore rupees, which means this person holds the key. He will have the highest voting power, right? So, whatever play, plan B1 says is good, B2 and B3 may have to agree for the most time, right? So, it completely depends on how much a uh, voting power is required to give a go ahead to the plan. Generally, it was considered. 75% of the vote should go to the plan right only if 75% of them say that this is a good plan then only they are going to go, go ahead with the particular plan a coordinated strategy so what is this plan and all this stuff you are going to learn later uh, so there are different ways of dealing with such uh, loans right which are about to become npas we are going to learn about that later so this thing did not work actually your jlf did not work why because most of the times you know it used to be problematic for the sole reason that if b1 said it is a good plan b2 and b3 used to say it is not a good plan right this is not the way to recover ye problem tha and also it was not working because of the fear of media and scrutiny right as being biased in the sense uh for one particular loan you you came up with a particular strategy for a, another loan you came up with a different strategy altogether now the media and you know uh you know certain sections of the society will say that you know why did you do this to this particular firm why did you not do the same to the other particular firm now this is going to be problematic fear of media and scrutiny and uh, jlf did not take you know quick decisions right so that is why jlf did not work out well now the next part is something called as twin balance sheet problem right there's something called as twin balance sheet problem what is this twin balance sheet problem <clears throat> look at this just look at this uh yeah just look at this particular data in 2009 in 2009 the npas in india were as low as 2% right all the bank npas put together it was as low as 2% right it was very very less 
नाउ टू परसेंट से टेन परसेंट इतना जल्दी कैसा हो गया हाउ डिड इट बिकम फ्रॉम टू परसेंट टू टेन परसेंट सो क्विकली इट वॉज जस्ट इन टू थाउजेंड नाइन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट राइट देर आर मल्टीपल फैक्टर्स विच लेट टू दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम यू नो इट बिकेम अज प्रॉब्लम फॉर इंडियन बैंकिंग सेक्टर सो वॉट लेट टू दिस प्रॉब्लम वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इट इन एन पी ए जेनेसिस that but before that we'll see what this twin balance sheet problem is see it is a simple concept where you have the balance sheet of the bank bank balance sheet huh? on the other hand you have the corporate balance sheet so bank what does it do the bank <coughs> the bank gives the loan it gives the loan okay loan diya to the corporate sector now the bank is thinking that it is an asset right the bank thinks that it is an asset when there is no recovery from the corporate sector side the bank marks it as negative kyu returns nahi aa raha right negative balance sheet hua corporate sector mein corporate sector side mein balance sheet mein how does it look the corporate business still owes money to the bank which means it's still a liability you still have to pay it which means this also is negative right dono side negative this is called the twin balance sheet problem one side i have given the loan the money is not coming that is why it is negative on my side on the other side you know i have taken the money i have to pay the money but i am not paying yet which is a liability i have to pay at some point which is negative right dono side balance sheet problem hai it is called the twin balance sheet problem tbs challenge we call it for the first time it was talked about in 2015-16 right the tbs challenge was talked about in 2015-16 okay now npa genesis when we look at npa genesis how did it all start the first point is over optimism the first point is over optimism between 2006 and 2008 even the indian banks thought that the economy is going to do good and the uh, indian bank started lending to subprime customers it started lending to over leverage uh, the uh, firms right it started giving loans to the firms which did not have the capacity to to pay back it started giving loans to the individuals who had no capacity to pay back right so why did give thinking that thinking that it is uh, going to be uh, the economy is going to boom right economic activity is going to be booming so everybody will get a job they will be in a position to pay back the loan ye soch ke diya tha first problem is over optimism the second problem is slow growth second problem is slow growth on the basis of expectations you gave the loan what happened next 2008 mein global financial crisis hua because of the global financial crisis Indian economy started to slow, right? Indian economy was slow down over. Because of the slow down, people were not able to get the jobs they intended, or the economic activity was on the downturn. When the economic activity is on the downturn, you can't expect people to be paying loans, right? You can't expect people to be repaying the loans. Fine. That is the second problem. Third, government ka bhi issue tha. the government also has played the spoil sport so what is this government permissions and foot dragging there were so many scams there were so many scams uh say for example you had the coal scam you had the turji scam so in both of these scams what had happened was that the government had made a decision earlier few years back right 5 10 years 5 6 years back it had made a decision so now right now 
the investigation agencies are saying that right the decisions you have made earlier are wrong are completely wrong right so in hindsight in hindsight your decisions are wrong they are completely wrong so now you call it a scam now you call it a scam why because you know if you had used policy a see if you have used policy a in 2015 right this policy has led to a loss to exchequer right that is a loss to the government does loss led to a loss to the exchequer to the tune of let's say some 10 lakh crore or you know 5 lakh crore 5 lakh crore tak loss hua hai when are you saying this in 2020 2020 mein aake tum bol rahe ho policy a ke wajah se ye hua instead if you have used if you had used policy b you should have used policy b if you had used policy b this loss would not have happened okay this loss would not have happened now in 2020 you are sitting and you are saying these things now you say that because you used policy a some of the people got benefited some people got benefited so whosoever was in the government purposefully they gave they went ahead with policy a in order to benefit certain people which is a scam which is a scam okay where are you judging it in 2020 about what the decision taken in 2015 now what will people do now in 2020 whosoever is in the government right these people will start to drag their foot before making decision decision making before making a decision they will think twice thrice four times you never know when people will call it a scam right let me think you know 100 times before making a decision right now because of this there was foot dragging okay there was foot dragging because of the foot dragging the decisions were not made quickly when the decisions are not made quickly permissions will not be uh you know you do not get the permissions quickly because of this let's say you are trying to build a uh, uh let's say you are trying to build a flyover right you are a contractor you took a loan and you have started to build a flyover uh you know you go and seek the permission from various agencies in the government you have to seek permissions right so when you go and seek the permissions these particular agencies they belong to the government they think that okay i have to think twice why because they are calling everything a scam right you never know i i make a decision today i give the permission today after some years they might say you know you did not do this you did not do that you have taken the uh, you know you have taken the decision in a wrong manner isliye mai kya karta hu i am going to sit on the file for some days right or i will not make decision at all okay when the government agencies fear to make decisions the decision making process will be slow when the decision making process is slow the project ka cost the project cost will be overrun right why because of inflation obvious na there is going to be inflation no matter what you do so you thought that i have taken some 100 crore rupees loan for this particular flyover i am going to construct it with 100 crore rupees loan to liya hai lekin permission nahi mil raha hai what will happen then the cost of the project will increase to 102 crores to 2 crore to aapko loss hua is it not if it gets extended beyond that particular point aur problem hoga right this is called cost overrun isse bhi you know when there are too many cost overruns 5 years down the line right even if you complete the project you are not going to get anything out of the project now what do you do you drop the project who will repay the loan you say project hi start nahi hua kaise loan pay kare then next when this happens when this happens both the uh, promoter and the bank will lose interest 
right promoter is the person who has taken the loan right so whenever there are stalled projects you are going to see that there will be a huge cost overruns you are not going to uh, show any interest at all the moment you realize that even if i complete this project i am not going to get anything you are going to lose the interest the banker also loses the interest the banker thinks oh ye bhi bechara kya kare what will this person do right he has not been allowed to complete the project what can this person do he has taken the loan true but what can he do he cannot do anything right so banker acknowledges this fact and he writes it down right so instead of calling it an npa he removes it from the books right he removes it from the books and keeps it aside this is called writing it down and writing it off it is written off the books okay he does not call it npa he does not call it npa because the moment you categorize uh, categorize it as npa there is going to be investigation right there is going to be investigation from the rbi side so you will the bank will enter the bad books of the rbi right the bank also does not want to show that it has too many nps when it shows it has too many nps customer confidence will be lost in the bank rbi will say so many things to the bank isliye i will not classify it as npa i am going to just write it off the books keep it off the books for some time right now <clears throat> now zombie lending will happen what is this zombie lending so a loan to side mein rakh diya for some days it was kept aside right and next year mein ye karenge hum i am going to call this person again usko aur bada loan de dunga i am going to give him a much bigger loan with this bigger loan he is going to pay back the older loan right and he is going to continue you know with a new project but ye to zombie lending ho gaya you are over leveraging the person because the old project money he is paying now right what about the new project money who is going to pay for it right will he be able to start a new project with the money left obviously no so this is called zombie lending and evergreening a b problem kar diya and then you have maleficence what is this maleficence this is uh, maleficence is about uh, the bankers becoming corrupt right some of the bankers became corrupt or you know they became exuberant incompetent and corruption was there everywhere uh, bankers became over confident and uh, they did not check the uh, files properly documents properly basically kyc sahi se nahi hua tha right kyc was not good no you are customer that was not good right so uh, independent analysis nahi kiya just on the basis of previously how the customer was on the basis of this they had given a lot of loans fraud patently illegal action hai uh, by either the borrower or the banker right uh, what is this about fraud ye hota hai ki you lie to the bank or bank lies to you right you lie to the bank or the bank lies to the regulator that is rbi ke sath you know it says some lie or the manager bank manager lies to the uh, upper uh, you know higher authority ye sab kya hai fraud hai it is quite prevalent and not many measures have been taken over the years to solve the fraud thing right if you are uh, if you are close to the manager you get a better loan right so it doesn't matter what your assets are you know you get a better loan so a problematic hai these things you know amount to fraud okay next all these led to your npas okay now india mein npas utna problematic nahi hai as compared to other countries that's what your uh, survey had argued a few a uh, few years back why usually whenever you have high npas in a country 10% is very high right high npas in the banks in your country usually economies collapse but we did not see that indian economy collapsed why because most of the npas you see it in psbs most of the npas are in psbs public sector banks and public sector banks are owned by the government the depositors are not going to run away from these banks why because they have a guarantee 
that there is a sovereign backing okay whosoever have brought the shares of these uh, particular psbs whosoever have put the money in the psbs they are not going to run away right they are not going to say that give back my money i am going to leave right they are not going to say why they know that the government is backing these banks right they trust the government so much and one more thing it's not the retail loans which have caused the problem for us right it's not the retail loans which have caused the problem for us it is the infrastructure loans which are the culprits okay infrastructure loans which are the culprits and the good thing about the infrastructure loans is that when we say retail loans what are retail loans retail loans are your home loan personal loan right vehicle loan ye sab retail loans hai these are retail loans when we say infrastructure loans you taking the loan for building a residential apartment apartments ke liye or uh, for construction of road maybe construction of a highway maybe right highway roads or for the construction of dams maybe for anything basically so if you have taken the loan for such things and if you have not paid back at least you have created an asset is it not you have created an asset right so this has led to the creation of excess capacity excess capacity me create kiya right what does this mean excess capacity what happened 2008 2006 7 right the expectation was that the economy is going to grow well thinking that let's say a particular firm firm x right thinking that 2008 9 mein bahut improvement hoga economy mein the firm x thought that what i am going to do is the demand for my products will increase in 2008 9 what i am going to do is i am going to take the loan now itself and i am going to invest in machinery right i am going to invest in machinery or i am going to build more houses now itself i am going to build more houses or i am going to actually create what more capacity i am going to create more capacity now itself so that whenever the economy booms i will be ready i'll make landfall you know uh, profits so this is what this is creating more capacity so all the loans that were taken during 2006 7 or which have been converted into npas those are the loans which were taken for creating excess capacity right these are not the loans which were taken for these purposes they were not taken for these purposes retail purposes they were cre- they were creating some assets right they have created more capacity that's it so it is not a problem you have excess capacity the day the you know uh, demand rises you will be able to cater to the needs okay that is why it is not problematic however however you cannot be complacent with it right you cannot be complacent just because the more complacent you are the more it would hurt the growth prospects right being complacent is okay chalo theek hai koi nahi sahi ho jayega right it is going to get better going forward so why worry so much right if you stay like this the growth gets hit why because as long as the banking system is straddled right is pulled down is under the weight of what is under the weight of npas right if it is under the weight of npas it will not be in a position to lend better if it is not lending better growth would not happen the growth prospects will not be so good so that is why what will uh, what is the situation we have in fact the economic survey 2018 had said something about it even if the government does not slay the npa menace even if the government does not touch the npa problem it becomes irrelevant under two situations 
right it becomes irrelevant the npa problem becomes irrelevant under two situations one is called the phoenix scenario the other one is called the containment scenario so what is phoenix scenario <clears throat> phoenix scenario is like the firms which are looking like they are going to die they are going to rise like a phoenix okay how if you are going to give uh, enough policies give better policies for the gdp to expand right if the gdp grows by huge margins if it is growing very well so companies will be making huge profits now the companies can pay off the debts the very companies which were not in a position to pay the debts will be able to pay off the debts if the gdp grows very well this is called phoenix scenario why is it called phoenix scenario the firms which were not able to pay so far will be able to rise and pay it okay this is one second one is containment scenario and this is more about if the gdp becomes so big right if the gdp becomes so big the value of the loan that has become npa wo bahut chota dikhta hai is it not so the loans look smaller if the gdp expands by a huge margin ये दोनों पॉसिबिलिटीज है बट द कैच लाइज हियर नो मैटर वॉट यू डू फॉर योर इकोनॉमी टू ग्रो फास्टर वॉट शुड यू हैव यू शुड हैव द बैंक इन अ बेटर पोजिशन राइट इफ द बैंक आर बॉक डाउन बाय द एन पी ए मैन इज हाउ कैन यू एक्सपेक्ट द ग्रोथ टू टेक प्लेस सो यू कैन नॉट बी कंप्लेसेंट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे यू हैव टू बिकम वॉट यू हैव टू क्लियर दोज problems of the banking system then only you can do something right so agriculture loans home loans are not hurt due to psl norms and home loans not defaulting the corporates and the msmes do get hurt so this is something you know which you are going to uh, you just read through it after we complete the mudra thing and everything okay mudra thing after mudra you learn it so it's just one paragraph there okay economic survey 2020 what does this have to say with the npa problem npas had reached their peak in 2018 it had reached the peak in the sense it had reached almost 12% then right 12% reach ho gaya tha almost 12% now tell me we have the lockdown now we have the lockdown now most of the businesses are in bad shape okay will the nps increase or will they decrease this year will the nps increase or decrease yeah they are going to increase by a huge margin by a huge huge margin this time uh, the npa problem will not be in the infrastructure alone right those loans which have been taken to build infrastructure only those loans are not going to default only they are not going to become npas even the smaller loans right even the loans uh, which are retail sector maine bola tha retail sector mein loans acha tha right these loans were not creating any problem this time around right because of covid even they are going to create problems okay uh, we have to wait and watch as to how the government will proceed when it comes to these loans right look at this so percentage growth in bank loans gross npa as a percentage of loans so first look at the second graph look at this private banks ka look at this what is happening npas are rising but you know it's very less it's very less that is it's to the tune of 1. 5% npas in private sector banks look at this public sector banks it has always been on the higher side right in 2019 it has dropped right it has dropped but again it is rising again it is rising okay so gross npa hai ye and next just compare these two things why because the more the npas the less capacity to lend precisely that's what you see the red line here is that of your 
public sector banks, right? NPS have been rising. Look at this. Here, red line is PSBs again. It is percentage growth in bank loans, right? Whether they are giving more loans or not. See, as this curve goes up, NPS are increasing. What is happening to the loans they are giving? It is falling. Is it not? So more the NPS, less the loans you can give. More the NPS, less loans you can give. Okay. <clears throat> so Economic Survey 2020 also has appreciated that IBC proceedings. IBC is a, a insolvency and bankruptcy code, right? takes an average of 340 days to complete, unlike surface illegal producings, uh, which takes 4.3 years, appreciated that IBC helps recovering more amount of loan than surface in 2018-19. Uh, just remember surface and IBC. Why? Because we are going to go there next. Okay. It's just saying that IBC is a 2016 voila code. IBC 16, 2016. Surfezi came in 2002, okay? DRT came in 1993, right? It's just saying your ES20 economic survey is, is saying that IBC is working far, far better than Surfezi and DRT. We'll see what these two things are just in a while. Yeah, here you have. <clears throat> now. Here you have the IBC, surface DRTs. Okay, we'll be learning about them in detail. So the next part is the measures. What has the government done over the years? What has the RBI done over the years in order to tackle this menace of NPAs, right? So banking sector has been facing this problem. See, it's very simple. Banks have given the loans people have not repaid the loans when people are not repaying the loans banks ka profits come ho jata hai when banks profits go down they will not lend anymore right even if they are lending they will be very cautious when they are lending when the banks are having too high nps it is not good for the depositors as well depositors ka money be risk mein hai is it not why? Because bank is going into a loss, which means depositors' money is at risk now. When the depositors' money is at risk, RBI will come into picture. RBI will say, see, you are putting the depositors' money at risk. You have to bring in certain measures in order to make your ba bank stronger. Right? So, NPAs are going to bog down the bank from the depositors' side as well as the regulator's side as well as from its own side shareholder side as well so bank npa problem ko solve karne ke liye, what has been done over the years we are going to look at only one particular uh, thing today only one particular thing that is we are going to look at only the indra danush scheme sma classification we have already done special mention accounts right special mention accounts that's already done okay it is something which is undertaken by the rba today we are going to learn about indra danush okay we are going to learn about indra danush and we'll stop there after that the rest of the things we will take it up in the next class okay we are going to learn only about indra danush today so what is this indra danush yeah indra danush was one of the first uh, schemes which was launched right one of the first schemes which was launched in order to deal with the NPA problem okay now Indra Dhanush scheme does not have particulars right it does not have particulars it is a very broad framework right Bahut bada framework hai, broad framework hai. within the framework you have seven components or we call them seven verticals we call them rainbow components. We call them rainbow components. What are these seven components? A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. These are the seven components. Appointments, Bank Boards Bureau, K, 
capitalization or we call it recapitalization de-stressing empowerment framework of accountability governance reforms a b c d e f g basically okay so this is a very broad framework we have right and measures will be taken within the framework right inside the framework measures will be taken in the sense for appointments there will be certain measures right there will be certain rules you know the government and the rbi will come up with bank board bureau usme bhi thoda sa you know there will be uh, some tinkering here and there de-stressing ka matlab kya hai you know your indra dhanush scheme says de-stressing karna hai uske andar de-stressing mein kya karna hai what are you supposed to do within de-stressing these are something which are particulars it does not speak about particulars particulars are something the rules which the rbi and the government will come up with the, in the near future so indra dhanush is a framework right it's a policy framework you are going to take the measures later on right one by one right first thing is appointments first thing is appointments so npa problem kyu hua why did the npa problem happen one of the reasons can be that of you do not have efficient people running your bank right you do not have efficient people running your banks maybe so isiliye what you do is psbs mein make appointments bring in talent from the private sector in the private sector you have a lot of talent who have been very successful bring them to the public sector banks give them better salary and bring them let them run the business for some time and the second part in appointments is that there was a conflict of interest that existed which is the ceo and md of the psb was the same guy so that is problematic why you have the md managing director and you have the ceo both these positions are shared by the same person were shared by the same person earlier in a psb in the psb you have board of directors right you have the board of directors the head of the board of directors is md managing director so this board of directors right this board of directors the work of board of directors is to make policy to make policy policy making for the bank policy making in the sense uh, you know on what basis should we be giving loans to whom should we be giving loans uh, you know on what basis should we select you know uh, certain people for certain positions in our bank ye sab decision leta hai kaun bank board of directors now the head of this board of directors is managing director who is a ceo this policy will be implemented by the ceo implementation by the ceo now you see the problem if the same person who makes the policy is also implementing the policy right this person ceo always tries to make a policy which is easier for him to handle or make a policy which is going to be beneficial to the ceo or his friends maybe hai na so policy making body should be separate from the implementation body right otherwise the ceo will make the policy according to his whims and fancies this was the case with your what your psbs both the positions were handled by the same person md and ceo now they decided that ceo and md ka post separate hona chahiye right this was done this was the first thing which was done right that was appointments second bank boards bureau right bank boards bureau what is this about how do you select these people how do you select a ceo how do you select a person uh, who is manager level who is how how do you select a regional manager for a particular bank on what basis are you going to select high level appointments are here how are you going to make it so earlier it was all arbitrary now instead what they have done is they have come up with bbb 
Bank Boards Bureau. The Bank Boards Bureau, what it is going to do is, it is going to select certain people, right? You are going to have certain people on the Bank Boards Bureau. Uh, these people are going to select, you know, the talent from various sectors, and they are going to make the appointments. They go, a log sahi hai. is, you know, for this position, this person is better. They are going to hunt down the talent and they are going to put them in place. Now the government will not be, now the government will not be handling this thing. Government will not be acting like a middleman. It will not be tinkering with the appointments, right? The bank boards bureau will do it. So complete separation of execution policy is also not good. Input should be taken by the executive body. Uh, it's true. Right? Inputs are to be taken. That is why the CEO is generally given a place on the board of directors. Right? But he is not the managing director. Understood? He should be given a place. But he should not be made the managing director. Right? He can be one of those persons who attends the meeting. He should, he should be given the power to vote as well. But he should not be made the managing director. Is it not? The next thing is recapitalization the next thing is recapitalization or capitalization what is this component about so i was telling you uh you know the banks are supposed to maintain right the banks are supposed to maintain certain amount of money right certain amount of money uh in order to uh, protect the customer interest in order to protect the customer interest they have to maintain certain extra money right uh if if you are not maintaining this money, right, it is uh, taken for a fact that this uh, bank is not safe to put money in, right. Uh, in order to ensure this, there are something called as Bessel 3 norms or Bessel norms, right, Bessel norms. So how much are you supposed to keep aside? How much assets should be there in your bank? right in order to say that your customers are safe right so it is a ratio right capital to risk weighted asset ratio we call it i'm going to tell you talk about it later so whenever npas are more the amount you keep aside will be lesser right so for this reason the more the risk weighted assets the more money you are supposed to keep aside we are not talking about provisioning provisioning is different okay so just like that you know you are supposed to keep certain amount in a asset form particular asset form if this amount is becoming less the government has to step in and it has to put the money this is called recapitalization basically whenever the npas are more the bank will not be able to meet certain targets that is meet the Bessel three targets at this point the government is supposed to step in and put some extra money. This is called recapitalization, okay, or capitalization. The next part is de-stressing. What is de-stressing? Problem to infrastructure sector, mein hai, right? Clearances are not, uh, you know, awarded quickly. Because of this reason, project delays ho hai. Because the projects are getting delayed, right? They are not able to pay back the loans. So, solve the infrastructure problem itself. Solve the root cause. Us problem ko solve karo. Strengthen the ARCs, uh, asset reconstruction companies. What are these asset reconstruction companies? Uh, you know, an ARC, an ARC is a company. What it does? Asset reconstruction company. <coughs> you have a bank bank had given a loan okay it had given a loan a loan is an asset for the bank but the person who has taken the loan is not returning the money this loan has become an npa now it's a npa asset which is a bad asset it's a bad asset as of now the bank can now sell this asset to a particular company called arc the asset reconstruction company right the bank will sell the loan to ARC, right? It is selling an asset to ARC. ARC will buy it at a low price. Low price may buy karega. 
when it buys it at a low price bank ko paisa mil gaya bank's balance sheet is clear now right thoda sa you know loss hua bank ko lekin it got something back right so arc buys it at a low price and arc is going to reconstruct it in the sense arc is going to try to make the recovery recovery from whom to whom so ever the loan was given unse recover karne ke liye you have the arc right so these people are you know uh, very good at it right recovery karne mein so these arc architecture right you have to strengthen them right we do not have you know strong arcs in india asset reconstruction companies are not strong in india we have to strengthen them and uh, one more thing is you have to develop a vibrant debt market for psbs so what is this debt market what is this equity market we are going to learn about it later okay next empowerment what is empowerment giving greater flexibility and autonomy to the psbs in hiring manpower one of the main problems of the psbs is you know most of the appointments happen on the basis of uh, the political uh, uh, whims of the political masters right so uh, the political people who so ever are in the government they make the you know uh, they make the appointments for the higher posts and uh, you know even on the low in the lower posts right it would be completely dependent on if the politician says so who so ever is the finance minister or who so ever is under the finance minister they can handle most of the things when it comes to the appointments thing or you know uh, hiring the manpower isiliye kya karna hai what are you supposed to do let it aside psbs ko treat it as a corporation right you own it true leave it to the board of directors let them let there be independent board of directors let them make their own decisions the government should not interfere in any way the more you interfere the more problems you are going to cause okay let them earn money and give it to you matlab let them give it to the government at the end of the day if the psbs are making a lot of profits it comes to the government itself right why are you tinkering with these guys right why are you tinkering with these banks don't do it ye empowerment hai give these banks greater flexibility and autonomy to operate and hire people right so if you uh, go in middle what will you do you will be hiring uh, non meritorious candidates and you are going to cause all sorts of problems right and next one is framework of accountability on performance indicators okay so for this what uh, the rbi has done rbi has done is that it has come up with what is called as pca prompt corrective action framework okay there is something called as prompt corrective action framework we are going to learn about it later see uh, look at this here you have the prompt corrective action framework we have to learn the details so i have put it here itself right but we are going to talk about these things later as well okay so prompt corrective action framework uh, according to this framework what they do is these are the parameters that are set okay performance indicators if the bank is good in these performance indicators okay rbi is going to say okay fine you continue do your work if you are not good on these indicators right rbi is going to say i am going to do something to you okay in the sense i am going to take control of your board of directors i am going to kick out certain board of directors i am going to you know uh, shut down your uh, bank i am going to merge your bank with someone right i am not going to allow you to take certain decisions i am not going to allow you to open a new branch aisa kar dunga okay this is framework of accountability right maintain the performance indicators properly okay and finally you have the governance reforms this is the seventh vertical so the seventh vertical is governance reforms it's about a bankers retreat or gan sangam conferences it's more about a uh, various regulators including your rbi the government officials finance ministry basically corporate affairs ministry officials and then you have your uh, sebi right securities and exchange board of india and then you have your irda insurance regulator and then pension fund regulator all these people big people okay all these people come together sit and uh, talk right chai pe charcha karte hain right they talk and uh, you know talk about what 
financial stability basically right how to solve this npa problem how to make our financial sector more strong aise baate karte hain okay that's about governance reforms that's your indra dhanush it's a very broad program in fact when you look at it all the stuff that happens from now on right till pca framework basel norms is something which is international till pca framework it's all in one way or other under the broad heading of indra dhanush so okay uh, though the government does not use the term indra dhanush now we can say that everything that is being done or has been done is under the broad heading of indra dhanush so okay so that's it for today you have any doubts you can ask me yeah any doubts okay perfect okay there is one two two people okay mic access bank boards bureau uh okay okay just a second first will is now to dushant other people can leave right if you don't have any doubts you can leave Yeah, Dushant, go ahead. Uh, see, uh, Dushant, just a second. Hello. So, uh, inflation. So, inflation. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the inflation test. Uh, by probably today evening or tomorrow morning, it will be there. Right? You can write the inflation test, and also I'm going to give you the banking test as well. probably by next week okay and uh, uh last year questions are included all these questions are included in your test papers itself okay and one more thing i would like to say is whatever questions you are getting now they are going to get repeated again right they are going to get repeated again maybe small changes will happen in the options in the test series which is going to start the test series which is going to start in the month of july towards the end of july or starting of august right in the month of august or starting uh, end of july that's when your test series is going to start okay so inflation test by today evening right banking test probably by monday right banking test by probably monday and all the previous year questions will be included in that it's okay and uh, now uh, a bank board bureau uh, what is this about the bank board bureau is for making high level appointments right uh so for what used to happen is the government used to make all the appointments right government used to make all the appointments so whosoever government liked it used to appoint them in the highest positions in the psbs right these people were not actually unbiased they used to always favor whatever the government people said or the political people said for this reason you had to separate the appointments thing from the government itself so you brought in a new body called what you brought in a new body called bank board bureau which is going to handle all the appointments high level appointments and also you have to remember the bank board bureau is going to give uh, instructions or give advice to the banks as to whether you should go for a merger or a acquisition or whether you know how to deal with the mpa problem wo advice bhi dete hai right the bank board bureau does it as well and when does the offline class start you guys tell me right are uh, you guys time uh, tell me when are you ready to attend the class right uh, the thing is the government has not yet given a, a proper uh, direction right as to when to start the classes uh, what we have come to learn is uh, that uh, there has been a, some sort of pressure put upon the government by various coaching institutes right that uh, you know we have to open the classes right offline classes 
and uh, the government in all likelihood will release a notification by the end of this month so that institute can open from july 1st okay highly likely there will be a standard operating procedure which the government is going to give that is you know there should be masks there should be a particular distance and sanitizers and all this stuff so let's see how it goes right highly likely that by you know within the next 10 12 days right you are going to get a notification about it okay in fact everybody is eager to come to the offline class right even we are eager to come to the offline class fine so so far i have not seen any of your faces and i am teaching you guys right yeah most of the faces i have not seen yeah yeah dushant you can go ahead yeah hello yeah this so is about uh, special mention accounts and everything like all the things that are there like mm -hmm. one three days then sma one sma two yes then plus non-performing asset then there's a whole like basic legal framework like if the bank is not keeping check on something then rbi will keep a check on something yes and then that legal procedures then yes. how the all these scams end up happening like more this need of more with money and then kingfisher taking off because if one party is not keeping check on it, then definitely, like, you know, another party will be keeping a check on them, right? Yes. Yes. The thing is, when did this SMA classification start? start right. right. The SMA classification started only recently. Okay. The SMA classification has started only recently. Right. Are you able to hear me, guys? Are you able yes. to hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, lost the connection there so this sma classification has started only recently in fact you know all these banks or uh, you know the regulators have woken up only recently see uh before uh this uh, let's say 2015-16 the government was not even worried about the npas okay the government thought that everything is going fine in the banking sector. The RBA also was not worried. Why? Because nobody was reporting anything, right? Only in 2015-16, we started realizing that the banks, you know, are not lending properly. Then they started looking into it. Why are they not lending properly? They started looking into the books, right? Once they started looking into the books, they came to understand that, okay, this is the problem we really have right only then all this started all this circus started only then right so sma classification is a bad may start hua hai, right it was not before that okay so bb bbb and uh, empowerment uh, very similar they are pretty much similar empowerment is more about giving autonomy to the banks right empowerment is about giving more autonomy to the banks itself in the sense the bank will be deciding most of the stuff psb will be deciding most of the stuff rb uh, your government will not interfere in decision making okay so who needs to be on the board who needs to be uh, heading the particular task force who sh how should they recover all such things will be decided by whom the bank itself let the government not decide right so ye hota hai empowerment just like see you know the colleges right you know the colleges you know the autonomous colleges is it not so autonomous colleges will be working like you know they are running everything on their own right including the curriculum is it not so this is something different from the college college which is under a particular university is it not so you being under a university right you will have less autonomy you will be less empowered similarly a bank which has links with psb which has close links with your government will have less autonomy it should be working outside the clutches of the government right then it will be working better right it will have more freedom to take uh, decisions and faster decisions in fact 
So this year prelims got postponed. Next year it will be uh, in May itself, or uh, it may change. It is not going to change. Okay, next year it is not going to change. There's no way they are going to change the date of next year. Uh, this is precisely the reason why they have uh, kept the examination in the month of January itself. See, usually you get three months break, right, after the prelims, right, three, four, four months break, actually, three and a half, four months. This year it's not that much, right? You hardly have uh, October to November uh, and then November to December and then you have in January, right? So it's a shorter duration you have between the prelims and mates right you have a shorter duration so for this reason you can expect that next year's prelims will happen on time right it is going to happen on time so prepare don't miss the classes okay revise as many times as possible if you have doubts do ask get your doubts clarified okay do not stop preparing yeah uh Mike Kavya. Yeah, go ahead, Kavya. Kavya? Please take the security, you know, sir, like uh, uh, if you're taking the loans on the like home or the vehicle they will take the security papers like that no and mm. when we don't pay the loan or like pay, what is that principal or interest mm. they can they will seize no after some time and why how they will be a uh, npas and you know? okay now <laughs> the problem is the problem is fine you have taken a mortgage security paper aapke paas hai, okay so uh, when you want to uh, actually liquidate the asset, it is called liquidating the asset. Okay. So when you want to liquidate this asset or sell off the mortgage, you have to bring a, uh, you have to take it to, you have to inform the person from whom you have taken the loan, right? From whom, for whom you have given the loan. You have to inform the customer basically. Now the customer, what he does, he does not sit quiet. He says that, you know, I had these many problems, right? That is why I was not able to pay. I will take you to the court, right? Now you go to the court. Court mein kya hoga? Aur kitna saal lagega? How many years does it take to clear these, you know, cases, right? That is why these cases are civil cases. And these cases go into the civil courts, right? Uh, and civil courts had too many cases to handle. Isiliye? they came up with new set of codes called drts okay uh debt recovery tribunals even in debt recovery tribunals there were too many cases right and uh, with you know uh, they did not have enough power right so they were given more power uh, they are trying to resolve this problem the thing is every time you try to recover people will run to one or the other court right they'll bring a stay right stay la there and uh, to clear this particular case it would take years right is the bank ready to fight the case for so long see a particular bank branch will have given loan of let's say 100 people 100 people ke liye loan diya hoga, right all the 100 people default right how many people can it hire in order to fight a case fight these cases right it has to hire so many lawyers as well right yes the problems hai. Uh, you know, we'll look at them one by one as we go further, right? Rahul. Yeah, go ahead, Rahul. Rahul, I have given you the access. Yes. Uh, so actually, when we are taking a loan, mm. and uh, suppose if we take a loan of uh, 50 lakh, 
mm-hmm. and some part of money bank will put aside mm-hmm. with them mm-hmm. but so still we are taking like full loan like 50 lakh if we are demanding and we are getting 50 lakh mm-hmm. so like how they are putting aside then see 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 when you are taking a loan of 50 lakh right the bank is putting aside money not from the 50 lakh it keeps aside the money from its profits okay 50 lakh dete samay usko problem nahi hai it gives 50 lakh only when you don't pay the interest or principal for the 50 lakh for 90 days right then it is a risky asset now the bank has to keep some amount of money from its profits right aside to make sure that this risk can be averted right a 50 lakhs are risky ho gaya. from its profits it has to keep aside as a reserve yeah uh, but so still that's the bank money only so it's the bank harm. money it's the bank money so there is no harm for the lender like those who is taking money borrowing money no, no. the borrower is not hurt in this process right the borrower is not hurt in this process at all right so the question is on the lender why did you lend to such a person in the first place so because you lent it to such a person who is not ready to pay or who is not able to pay you keep the money aside from your profits why should you keep the money aside from your profits because you have taken money from the depositors na right you have taken the money from the depositors uska interest dekhbhal kaun karega right so for that reason, what are you supposed to do? You have to keep some money aside whenever you have NPAs. Okay. So from your profits, you are going to keep. Fine. So recently there was a problem with S Bank. Uh, what was that, sir? Okay. Uh, S Bank issue, we are going to take it up later on. Right. So S Bank, PMC, right. PMC, we have already discussed, I guess. Right. So S Bank issue, we will take it up tomorrow. Right. Uh, S Bank. Or one more thing is related to your uh, Nero Modi case, Vijay Malia case, right? We are going to take it up tomorrow. Okay. And in the sense, the next class. Fine. All right, then. I assume, uh, yeah, what is that? IDFC? What is it about? IDFC? Jagadish? So IDFC issue, it was more of an acquisition. It was privatization issue. Okay. It was more of a privatization issue. Uh, so the issue was that, you know, um, IDFC was supposed to be sold to someone, right? It was supposed to be sold to IDFC was not making much profits, right? It had its own internal issues. So it was supposed to be sold to uh, some private player, but no private player came forward. Why? Because IDFC was a loss-making thing, right? It was a loss-making entity. So uh, government searched, 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 and nobody was ready to buy IDFC. So it sold it to LIC, right? LIC bechara, right? LIC, uh, you know, uh, brought this IDFC, right? And uh, after buying IDFC, LIC became the owner, but LIC belongs to the government, right? So it is supposed to be called a, you know, PSB itself still, but for some reason, RBI says it is a private bank. Okay. So you need not burn midnight's oil on IDFC issue. Uh, just remember this guys, you're not supposed to worry about, you're not supposed to worry about the private bank issues, right? You're supposed to worry about the concepts, right? You need not know about the scams. You need to know about the terms in the scams. Okay. You need not know about, you know, which bank, let's say Lehman Brothers was the bank which was related to subprime crisis lending. You need not know about that. You just have to know about what is subprime lending, right? Who is a subprime customer? You need to know the concepts, right? You need not know about the issue per se. Okay, fine. So we'll stop the class here. Uh, we'll take up rest of the part related to your uh, uh, NPS in the next class. Okay, you'll get the test by today evening right do solve the test by uh, and uh, by the way i have put up the banking notes right somebody download the uh, banking notes and uh, put it across in the group okay someone so some people might not be knowing some people have left right for that reason okay all right then